I'm here with an update for my 2020 autumn DIY pool solar system solar heater upgrade. The reason I'm whispering right now is because it's 5 a.m. As you can see, it is dark out. Um, I like to wake up early and get a good few hours working because at about eight or nine, once the sun starts to come up properly, it gets too hot to work. It's quite uncomfortable. I'm probably more than halfway through this project and it started to occur to me that I do not have any photos or videos of the autumn solar system. So the idea here is to increase the length of the swimming season, um, taking it from around three or four months up to hopefully around eight months a year, particularly with COVID at the moment and the kids at home. This is important uh, because we spend a lot of time out here and we want to enjoy the pool as much as possible. Um, anyone who's got any experience with heating a swimming pool will know that it takes a huge amount of energy to even get the temperature of the water up a few degrees. Um, it's quite, if you haven't got an experience with it and you come to it, it's actually quite shocking. It's nothing like a uh, domestic hot water system at all, where you've maybe got 100 or 150 or 200 liters that you're trying to heat up. This is much, much more water. Uh, it's not comparable at all. When you're dealing with a swimming pool, you're talking about at the very least two or three cubic meters of water. And uh, if you've got, a, I mean, I've only got a tiny little pool. I mean, some people's pools that it's just a huge amount of water and the amount of gas or electricity you actually need to increase the temperature in the pool. Um, a lot of people are quite sensitive to water temperature, especially old people and kids and stuff. And it's just not comfortable to swim when the water is cold and you'd be surprised. Pool water doesn't stay <laughs> automatically at the ambient te temperature of the, the air. So like, I mean, if you've got a day which is say 25 or 26 uh, degrees Celsius outside and it's nice weather and sunny and you, you want to go for a dip in your pool, you get in the water and it's freezing cold. It doesn't automatically retain the heat from uh, the previous day and keep nice and warm like you would imagine. Anyone who uh, owns a pool knows exactly what I'm talking about and that's a real shame because you've got sunny warm days but your pool is freezing cold so that's no good. Um, as I said, I'm nearly finished. Uh, well, I'm about over halfway through uh, the upgrade project of uh, autumn 2020. And a few people have asked me, why am I even investing so much time to upgrade the system when I had a perfectly good working system before? And I'm going to explain why now. The old system was essentially one panel and it was one long length of 20 millimeter pipe coiled up into an oval installed in a glaze, glazed box with some aluminium inside and painted black inside in order to absorb as much heat as possible. The problem with that system, and I always knew this when I built the first prototype, was that first of all the the diameter of the pipe restricts the flow significantly of the pump and we all know that the overall increase in heat in the pool is not just dependent on the temperature differential between the water going to the solar system and the water coming back it's also dependent on the flow rate meaning how much water can you shift through the system um, in order to warm up your pool so this is called series, this type of system. It's just one long pipe. The water has to go through 60 meters of this pipe. And it works. It heats up the water quite well. But it's not that efficient. I always knew that I wanted to run a system in parallel with much wider bore piping. Just at the time in the spring, I couldn't... 
I couldn't come up with the right plan of parts and design in order to make that a reality. So this was a much simpler solution back then. And it's worked really, really nicely throughout the spring and the summer. It's heated our pool for us, sometimes too much. We needed to take the cover off the pool in order to, air, to lose a bit of heat um, or even turn the solar system off. Um, so it's it's been good, but the water the the temperature is now getting uh, cooler again. It's the beginning of October, and I've been thinking for the last five months a possible way of doing it better, and I've come up with a plan, and I'm gonna show you the design of the new system right now. There's three main differences between the new system and the old system. The first is that the old system I reinforced with a lot of uh, steel at the back of the panels and reinforced it with steel and wood and I was worried the whole thing would collapse if I didn't reinforce it. That made the frame much much heavier and for the new system I wanted to make the panels portable so that if I need to disconnect them and shift them around for any reason, I can play with different configurations. So I made them much lighter weight. The legs, instead of being one long strip of wood, is just three small strips here. And the back, which sits on the blocks, instead of being one long strip of wood and then the whole backing reinforced with steel, all I've got here is two wooden legs which have been screwed on and glued on. That's the first difference. The second difference is the diameter and material of the pipe we've used for the system. Last time we went for 20 millimeter PEX pipe, which I have explained uh, the problems with that. This time we have gone for a combination of 40 millimeter PVC. You can see the internal bore of that is quite wide. And 32 millimeter PVC pipe. That's what we've got there. And all you need is a bunch of these 40 by 30 T's and some primer and glue. The way this works is, it starts off, this is the empty box. You have to cut the pipes in, and uh, both the 40 pipe and the 32 pipe to size. The water comes into the panel at the bottom here at one end. This is 40 pipe and you can see there is pieces of pipe cut in and glued into each T. And the water comes in here, goes across the length of the bottom in the 40 pipe and also flows up the 32 pipes. So instead of running through one long thin pipe of 60 meters, it is running through multiple, much wider bore pipes at the same time. And I've got here the fins from the original panel. They come in either one large piece like this, or what's easier for this purpose is some of the panels come with these individual fins. So they weren't designed for my system, but what I've done is I've cut them to size and stuck them in between. This one over here, I just used some old strips from the original prototype because here I've got a little bit of a problem. There's a bit of a belly in the middle here that's raising it up too high, so the full fins wouldn't fit in nicely and then get the glass on top. So I just used these flat strips which I cut. Uh, for the original prototype. Um, I also installed these covers 
all it is is a white plastic tarp screwed and glued to the back so these ropes can come undone and you can basically cover the whole panel with these uh, covers so I just wanted to make this video before I actually painted it and installed the glass so it can you can see exactly how it works inside um, so those are the three main differences the lighter weight frame the wider bore pipe and the fact that the plumbing is completely different so I've now completed the autumn 2020 pool solar panel system just want to show the final product I said I would run through the plumbing I'm going to do that now the water comes out the pool from here, goes through this white pipe to the pump, comes out the pump and goes into this three-way valve. You have two options, well more than that, but you can either have the water going in and then going through the bypass, heading straight back to the pool or the water can go through the panels which it's doing at the moment it goes through here runs underneath the panels you can see it there right around the back and comes in at the bottom here it goes across the length of the bottom and up through the pipes I made all four corners sort of flexible and interchangeable so I can basically mess around with the configuration if I want. You can see actually from the other day I've got a different setup than I had before. That's also why I made the new ones lighter weight. So that up there is capped off. The water flows in here, flows up and across. Here I've plumbed it in in parallel, meaning the water goes into the next panel from the bottom from the top and the bottom okay these panels it was fairly straightforward because they sort of sit next to each other they are they you know one's a bit higher than the other that's because they're different size panels but also because I didn't want this one to come out too far and restrict the area that we have to walk through or the sitting area so it goes into the next one same idea comes out from the top here and this here is plumbed in series meaning the bottom here is capped off so it just comes out the top and runs to the next one same deal here water flows through the bottom is capped off comes out the top goes into this commercial one that I bought in the spring and then back into this Y and flows back into the pool like I explained before we'll do a quick temperature test now it's quite a nice hot day it's about 1.30 in the afternoon now the pool is actually warmer at the moment than we would usually like it um, this is the first day of running these tests I just wanted to see the potential of the system I've got this probe here and a thermometer so I'm just going to stick this probe where the water gets sucked out the pool we'll take a reading Thirty three point eight, and then we'll just pop it in the jet stream where it comes back from the solar panels back into the pool. Just going to stick it in here. And 
the reading here is 34.8. So that's one degree Celsius increase in the middle of the day. So <laughs> one person asked me, the old system with those, this round pipe here, up the temperature by four Celsius. So how could it be that this much more comprehensive system is only upping the temperature by one degree? So the answer to that is fairly simple, I'm sure you know. The flow rate on the old system was something like um, six liters a minute, like 360 liters an hour. The flow rate on the new system is 10 times that. So the whole thing is about 3,600 liters of water in the pool. So this new system can turn over the whole pool at a one degree increase in temperature every hour. Now, I haven't done the full calculations, but I think that's about at least double the temperature increase of the old panel. But you also have to bear in mind that there's many other factors going on here, so you can't really compare. It's not like comparing uh, apples and apples because there's numerous other factors going on. There's the cooling, there's the length of the days, where the sun is in the sky. Um, another major factor is yeah, cold water heats up quicker than warm water. So for example, if the temperature in the water was around 25, we might even see a more than one degree increase, maybe a degree and a half increase because the amount of energy it takes to heat up colder water is less than it takes to heat up warmer water. Once the water's already retained a certain amount of heat, it takes more energy to increase the temperature the same amount. So, I don't know, a good comparison, but like when you boil a kettle, the amount of energy that, takes, that it takes to heat up the water the first 10 degrees is less than it takes up to heat it up the next 10 degrees and the 10 degrees after that and the final amount of energy it takes a day when you watch a kettle boil sometimes it can feel like forever until the button clicks off even though it felt like the the water was about to boil for 10 or 12 seconds that final kick is the hardest part and requires the most energy so that's the way heating water works don't ask me why i'm not a scientist um but yeah it's complete